OpenAI have added a new feature to GPT-4 called Code Interpreter. In this video, I'll cover what it is and how it differs from previous versions of GPT-4. I'll show and test how it lets you now upload files as well as run code in a Python sandbox. On Twitter, people are already using it to build games in just a matter of minutes, or map the population density of the US by zip code, or even just produce really nice diagrams for statistics and information based on Excel spreadsheets. I wanted to know, is this GPT-4 with just some coding plugin or is this something entirely new? I headed to OpenAI's website and they mentioned that the code interpreter is a new experimental model of ChatGPT. As a brand new model, it can do a few new things, including use Python, upload files, and let you download files too. So how's this new model run code? It does this by having Python exist in a sandbox, allowing it to be firewalled and then executed inside of a temporary space. This means this version of ChatGPT GPT can essentially do math, which was one of the biggest limitations with previous versions because it kind of has a calculator, which is in the form of Python. And because it can use Python to do calculations, it can also graph out statistics as well as do graphs. And also with the benefit of being able to now upload files and run them in this code interpreter, it could essentially do your homework. Now let's try it. It's been enabled for everyone. Head to settings, then head over to beta features and just select to tick the code interpreter. Then it'll be available under GPT-4 from the drop-down list. First, I'm gonna ask it to create a graphical representation of Pi. It doesn't just give me a breakdown of what Pi is, it tries to run it in a code sandbox. Unfortunately, the first attempt actually fails, but this model is smart. It can identify it failed and try again, which it does right over here. The result is this diagram, which is what I was looking for. I can go back to look at the Python code. It imports a library. The code is clean with good markup, and I could take this and copy paste it straight into an application. Math is another thing this GPT model can now do. Previous versions of ChatGPT would hallucinate numbers if they didn't know how to add them up. But with access to Python and in a sandbox, these numbers can be added up and then the language model can present them. Also, I can ask complicated questions like how long would it take to drive to the closest city from Perth at 100 kilometers per hour. ChatGPT code interpreter identifies each city, its distance, then creates a formula for creating the calculation of how long it would take versus the distance, and then plugs these into Python so that it can accurately measure exactly how long it would take. I double checked this on Google and it was more or less correct, except GPT did a straight line, whereas Google actually uses the roads. The next cool feature is being able to upload files. You can upload almost anything. In this case, I'm going to upload a PDF that I have and it has to be 100 megs or less. I can then ask questions like, what is this PDF about? Originally, it might think that it doesn't have the ability to read PDFs, but it does using Python. I'll give this AI model a little bit of encouragement. You can definitely do it. Try using Python to read the PDF. This second attempt works. It tells me that this is a book by Adrian to learn design, things like color theory, fonts, topography, UI, UX. And yes, it's a real book that you can check out and even buy at the link in the description under Enhance UI, or even if you just want to support the channel. Another type of file that can be uploaded is just a plain text file. This is one of the easiest to do. Normally, I get emails for website changes or I have a document written up for me of what needs to be done. ChatGPT can now summarize these for me. I get to view these in a much more organized fashion. Here's the original file and as you can see, it is quite difficult to read and go through because sometimes when clients write changes, well, it's kind of difficult to read. Uploading text files could be done for all sorts of things like text transcripts or for example, text meeting notes or or well, even just your to-do list. I can then continue to chat to the model, identifying which changes I should likely make first as well as why. Now for one of the coolest things that Code Interpreter can do, which is analyze Excel spreadsheets. I have this giant one with thousands of rows of all the real estate sales. This is a lot of information from the size of the place to what it sold for, when it sold and how old it was. Then I'll upload this CSV file to ChatGPT. I'm gonna pass in that this is real estate data. And what I wanna do is produce 10 really cool statistics or graphs based on this information. Code Interpreter then will use Python to interact with the file. It'll read the data and then figure out exactly what would be very useful graphs to create. And then it'll start generating them. Here's one of sales versus year built with a summary as to what it means. Here's another one of property age, etc. 
sale. And this is the point. ChatGPT can do some really good analysis of the data just from spreadsheets like this. Uploading, accessing, and modifying images is another thing that the new ChatGPT code interpreter model can do. I'm going to upload a photo of myself and I'm going to ask if it can identify my face and its location on this photo. Just like before, it's using Python to be able to perform this action. And while it might not be able to access the image itself, there are Python libraries for things like face detection, which it can use to identify the location of my face. You can see it's done a great job here with the red square around my face. Next, I'm going to ask it to do some image modification essentially cropping around my face to be able to create an avatar. And yes, it could do this too. Here's the image, except the only problem was that there was still a red square here. I requested it to use the original image and to remove the red square, but unfortunately it got a little bit confused and removed all the red colors in general from the photo. I requested one more time to use the original image, but not to remove the colors and success. Here's a great image that I can use for my LinkedIn profile. Uploading code directory is another thing you can do inside of the new code interpreter model. I have this ChatGPT starter kit. I'm going to perform a zip and I'm going to then upload this zip file to the model and start off with a simple question to see if it knows what this project is about. Using Python, it unzips the code, it scans through all the files and inspects some of them as well. From this context, it accurately found out that it is a starter kit for OpenAI and its GPT model. I took this one step further by asking it to modify the project to add timestamps as part of the front end code. The project is running inside of React and most of the content is inside of the client folder. It actually goes through the client folder, identifies the correct file to change, and then gives me the modified code to be able to add timestamps in. I then copied this code straight into my project and yes, it did work. There are lots of different ways to use Code Interpreter from OpenAI. If there's ones that I haven't listed, let me know in the comments below. If you've stayed until this point, check out my new book, Teach Me OpenAI and GPT. This is a digital book that covers everything from how to use the OpenAI API, how to do fine tuning and much more. It's over 48 pages and it's in the description below.